Hey, what's up, guys? You're now listening to Devo with Uncle Theo. Today is day 107, and we're going to cover 2 Samuel chapter 17 and 18. Last time we left off in chapter 16, remember, Absalom is conspiring against his father, David, trying to usurp him and take his throne. He's gardener the council of Ahithophel, and we know this really stresses David out and causes him a lot of pressure because Ahithophel was one of his trusted counselors and he knows how wise he was. In fact, the text said yesterday that acquiring wisdom from Ahithophel was just like acquiring the word of God. And imagine that for wisdom. And he even gave him the wisdom to lay with his father concubines. But things are about to start to make a shift here today in chapter 17. So let's look at that. Verse 1. Furthermore, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Please let me choose 12,000 men that I may arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and exhausted and terrify him so that all the people who are with him will flee. Then I will strike down the king alone and I will bring back all the people to you. The return of everyone depends on the man you seek. Then all the people will be at peace. So the plan pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. But listen to this in verse 5. David has a plant amongst his son Absalom. His name is Hushaya, and he's about to speak now. So he's gotten the wisdom from Ahithophel. Now, this is the opposite. You remember we learned in Proverbs that a multitude of counsel is safety. Sometimes getting a multitude of counsel isn't wise <laughs> because it is right here. Listen to this. Absalom called Hushaya, and he says, let's hear what he has to say. When, it, when Hushaya had come to Absalom, Absalom said to him, Hithophel has spoken thus. Shall we carry out his plan? If not, you speak. So Hushaya said to Absalom, this time the advice that Ahithophel has given is not good. Moreover, Hushaya said, you know your father and his men, that they are mighty men and they are fierce, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is an expert in warfare and will not spend the night with the people. Behold, he has now hidden himself in one of the caves or another place. And it will be when he falls on them at the first attack that whoever hears will say, there has been a slaughter amongst the people who follow Absalom. And even one who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will completely lose heart. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man and those who are with him are valiant men. But I counsel that all Israel will be surely, that all Israel will be surely gathered to you from Dan to even Beersheba. But listen to this in verse 14. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the counsel of Hushaya is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. Remember David prayed that God would confuse the counsel of Ahithophel and make it foolishness. Listen to this. For the Lord had ordained to thwart the good counsel of Ahithophel so that the Lord might bring calamity on Absalom. So God answers David's prayer. So no matter what Absalom conspires to do at this point, God is now on his side. So listen to this. It's different than your voice being like the word of God and you actually being God. David has God on his side. Absalom has a man who has the wisdom that comes from God on his side. And this God is betraying David, one who is carrying the promised seed. And if you know anything by now, you don't mess with God's seed. The seed of the woman will always be protected throughout human history because we got to get to Matthew 1 to birth Jesus. So if anybody is attacking the seed, God is always going to show up and show out like never before. And so Hishiah's warning saves David. It says in verse 15, this is what Ahithophel counseled Absalom and the elders of Israel. And this is what I have counseled. Now, therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, do not spend the night in the forest of the wilderness, but by all means cross over or else the king and all the people who are with him will be destroyed. And so Ahithophel gets wind of this in verse 23. It says, now when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and arose and went to his home, to his city and set his house in order and strangled himself. Thus he died and was buried in the grave of his father. 
So you know a man who has the wisdom like the word of God, he knows if his wisdom isn't followed. If they get Absalom, he's next because he counseled Absalom and he betrayed David and he's going to die for treason. And so he knows this. So he takes care of it himself. And this chapter ends with David crossing the Jordan and Absalom crossing the Jordan after him. And the reason crossing the Jordan was helpful for David is because it protects him from any kind of immediate attack because he will be able to slow down someone coming behind him from the river and he'll be able to see that attack coming. So in chapter 18, and David numbered the people who were with him and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. David sent the people out, one-third under the command of Joab, one-third under the command of Abishai, Joab's brother, and one-third under the command of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I myself will surely go out with you also. There we go. We got our king back. This is how you do it. But look at what they say. They say, you shall not go out, for if we indeed flee, they will not care about us. Even if half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore, now it is better that you be ready to help us from the city. And see, this is how it's done. You step up for your people and you let your generals tell you where you're needed. So we got our David back. So they go to battle. And as they're fighting, the servants of David in verse 7 slaughtered 20,000 men. And it says, For the battle there was spread over the whole countryside, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword. And so you even just see God fighting for them in this. The forest, the difficult nature of the forest killed more men even than they did in battle. It reminds me of the Egyptians. You remember when they went after the Israelites in the Red Sea and their chariots were getting stuck and they were swerving? That's God fighting for his people because that wasn't happening with Israel. And so you see that here. But something interesting happens in verse 9. Now Absalom happened to meet the servants of David, for Absalom was riding on his mule, and his mule went under the thick branches of an oak tree. And this is showing you how difficult this forest is to ride. Look at what the oak tree does. And his head caught fast in the oak, so he was left hanging between heaven and earth. Look at that the forest giving them Absalom on a silver platter. And so the servant comes and reports this back to Joab. It says, he's just sitting here hanging on a tree. And Joab says, why didn't you kill him? What are you doing? And the servant said, look, we heard David tell you, the three commanders, don't lay a hand on Joab. And I love this statement. And he says, you know that if I would have did this and David would have called me out, you would have stood aloof. You wouldn't have anything to say. Man, and that's a bold man right there. I like that. And Absalom says, look, get out of my way, man. Let me go handle this. And, and that's in verse 14, Absalom says, I would not waste my time here with you. So he took three spears in his hand and thrusted them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And 10 men who carried Joab's armor gathered around and struck Absalom and killed him. So Joab may have killed him, but but his armor bearers made sure that he was dead. And so now they have to report this news back to David. And Joab says to them, look, so Amaz wants to carry this news back. And Joab says, look, you're not the man to carry this news this day, but you shall carry news another day. However, you should carry no news today because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed to Joab and ran. Now Ahamaaz, the son of Zadok, said once more to Joab, but whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. So he outruns the Cushite. He reports the news to David of what happened on the battlefield, but he doesn't report the news of his son, Absalom, dying. And so they see a second man running and saying, this must be good news too, because the man is by himself. And he reports that Absalom is dead. He says it like this in verse 32, let the enemies of my Lord, the King, and all who rise up against you for evil be as that man. And the chapter ends like this, the King was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate. And thus he said, and he walked, oh, my son, Absalom, oh, son, oh, my son, Absalom. Why would I have died instead of you? So David is lamenting, and we'll pick up with this lament 
on tomorrow where we cover chapters 19 and 20. So my practical application for you today is, yeah, it's true in a multitude of councils, there is safety, but you need to pursue quality over quantity. Sometimes one good counselor is better than two good ones and two bad ones. And you take an eclectic approach of their wisdom. Be wise when you pursue your counselors, because sometimes the wisdom may just lie with one person. And sometimes it may lie with three or 10, but you need to know how to discern the difference. I always see people say, okay, I heard you. Now I got to go get a multitude of counselors. Listen, that quantity may be hurting you. Learn from my guy Absalom. Choose quality over quantity. You guys have a good day.